Hello there, puff pastry danishes. These are so good. Hi, I'm sharing with you in this video some recipes to spice up your breakfasts. I, <laughs> I'm not going to mute the clips behind what my voice my voiceover because I want you to hear. Um, I just like the authentic sound of of the background, whether it be I did edit out some screaming. Not gonna lie. Uh, anyway, I'm doing a run through of the danishes here. The Danish is required the egg yolks, not the egg whites. So I decided I'd have an impromptu breakfast myself. The children had um, boiled eggs and waffles earlier. I was taking a shower, so I wanted an omelet. So I found a chunk of random broccoli in the vegetable drawer in the fridge. I just started to fry that up. Added the egg white. <clears throat> and the seasoning you see on this egg white is actually Penzi's. This here. Love, love, love Penzi's. My mom got me s several. It expires this month. I'm trying to run through it which I did successfully. Anyway, um, Penzi's has dehydrated, freeze-dried, I don't really know, all kinds of herbs and vegetables and things that you don't see in regular seasonings. And I just truly love Penzi's. Really expensive, but uh, oh my gosh, so good. So that's what I threw on my omelet. I saw a lid left from when my husband made the kids breakfast. I just plopped that on top of my scramble there to melt the cheese. I had some leftover ham. Scrambles are great for getting rid of things in the fridge. So I had some ham my mom brought me and I just fried it up and here I am chopping some green onion and the cooked ham and I'm just going to sprinkle that on top of my egg white scramble. Would be an omelet but I'm still practicing my omelet skills. It always ends up being a scramble and it actually turned out to be filling and delicious. Here I am scraping it off onto the egg and the finished product is here. Then the next clip will show you, uh, the kids helped me make the danishes, so we'll, we'll get on to that. All of these recipes came from the same cookbook and I'll share what that was in the very end of the video. So I have Josiah up on the counter, he is my four year old, and then I'm trying to get Jeremiah to come join us, he is my three year old. And we're basically just getting the cream cheese, all the ingredients um, in the recipe I posted, hopefully you could screenshot that if you were interested. And um, Josiah's asking if he can play with the yolks. Uh, I, I didn't mind, I'm cooking it and it's not like we're giving it away anyway. So he was jabbing his little finger into the yolks, uh, just doing what a little curious boy does. And what am I doing here? Sorry about this voiceover. Uh, <laughs> I, I have all three kids in the room with me right now as I'm doing my voiceover and they're watching um, the Alphabet show on TV. So I'm actually surprised they're letting me do a voiceover. Uh, it's pretty quiet in here, actually. So there's gonna be all kinds of background noise happening. We've got cream cheese going on, some vanilla extract. It looked like I had some sugar in there. For some reason, I recorded <laughs> in slow motion when Jeremiah was taking a scoop of the flour. I left it in because it looks dramatic and cool. And here he is uh, dumping the flour into the mix. I used a fork because why not? <laughs> and I just mashed it. You can see uh, that little stir stick. <laughs> it's Jeremiah. It's my coffee stir, stir stick and he just was poking stuff. And um, Josiah wanted to try some of it, which I allowed. I let my kids eat raw egg. Oh my gosh. Anyway, uh, Jeremiah had quite a few spoonfuls, which I was surprised because he doesn't typically like sweet things. This puff pastry was on its last leg. It had been in my freezer for a very long time. Probably even expired, I'm not sure. No, it wasn't expired, I looked. It was, it, it just was pretty, uh, it cracked easily, it was just bad. Um, I also didn't roll it out the boys just cut it. I put way too much jam, way too much filling. These were supposed to look, if you saw the picture and what they looked like, I, I called them rustic, um, but oh my word, they were delicious. They're already all gone. Um, we brushed them with some egg wash, as the recipe told us to do, and then I noticed in the picture, but it didn't say in the recipe, that they had some kind of coarse sugar sprinkled on top, so um, not pictured because I totally spaced it until I saw the picture. I was like, let's sprinkle some turbinado sugar on these. And we did that. We sprinkled them with sugar, which I think was um, a nice crunch on the top. And um, here's Josiah and Jeremiah painting the egg wash on them. Boy, they did they explode. I had way too much filling. <laughs> but I, I don't think that I'll change that next time because I quite liked how they turned out. You can see a little tiny piece of puff pastry that was Josiah's little baby pastry he wanted right next to that white egg wash dish we cooked it they look don't they look crazy oh my gosh but they were so so good i'm making this again this is going in my save must have recipe box so good and then it was supposed to be for the following day but it's on the same page in the recipe book that the danish was or these breakfast parfaits and just i saw the picture and wanted to make it so i went ahead and made it right after we made the pastries and this was so good 
I was really pleased with the recipes that I chose to try. So I threw some brown sugar in there, some berries, and some peaches. I didn't really have everything that they asked. Some orange juice. Uh, kind of, I didn't follow this recipe exactly. And I feel like if I did, that's cornstarch. It would have been, could have possibly been better because it was pretty freaking excellent. I'm not even, I'm not even gonna lie. So I should have used raspberry, which is what the recipe called for, but I only had blueberries and peaches in my freezer. And I was supposed to blend it in the blender and then strain it through, but I didn't. I decided I was just going to use a potato masher, which ended up being a, a bad idea because I added the cornstarch to this also. So when I tried to make the sauce, it didn't come through the sieve because it was very thick because of the cornstarch. So I'm going to follow the recipe next time so that I have more sauce. I just gave up eventually and um, didn't have as much puree as I wish I had, but... Nevertheless, it was delicious. And you just kind of layer it however you like. The key to this recipe, I think... You can hear Jeremiah in the background. I'm so sorry. Um, There's probably a mash of all kinds of background noises happening here. So I did the puree, some berries. You're supposed to put granola right on top of that, but I think I switched to yogurt. I just ma I made them all different kinds of ways. Anyway, um, so good. The next time I make this, though, I'm going to put the orange zest in each layer because that was amazing. I've never put orange, je orange zest on my yogurt parfaits before, and I'm, I'm absolutely going to from here on out. It was, I think it was what made this recipe excellent. So you'll see me sprinkling some... Granola, that's my favorite kind of granola, the kind granola that's uh, cinnamon something or other. They make a few different kinds, but I like that one in the dark brown bag. And then I'm plopping some yogurt on top, and then I'm going to use my zester and zest some orange zest right here. Zip, zippity, zoo. Wow, so good. I, I wanted to eat two of them back to back, but I stopped myself. Look at how beautiful this is. Isn't that amazing? This was a keeper also so good this next recipe is the french toast really easy to do it was um some vanilla pudding mix it was a little bit difficult for me because i didn't use cook and serve we had um hard boiled eggs with these this french toast uh the, the cook and serve is a little bit thicker than the regular instant yogurt anyway so my trick for french toast I cook the French toast low and slow. If you cook it on a hot pan, the outside gets burnt and the inside is kind of mushy. This is bacon. This is uncured bacon. I'm still not used to cooking uncured bacon. It doesn't get as crispy. So when I was trying to get it crispy, it ended up just being burned, which is terrible. But my trick also is to put the French toast in a 200 degree oven. Some ovens go down to 170, which is what mine does. And that's how I kept that warm while everything else was ready. I cut it up into sticks for the little kiddos. At the last minute, they wanted some shredded cheese. And then I just cut up that egg for JL. And that's what we had for breakfast that day. Very good. I like that French toast recipe. This is the brunch pizza. And if you saw my grocery haul, you saw that the refrigerated crescent rolls, I don't really like them in anything other than original crescent roll recipes so i use the biscuits because when i make those shortcut recipes using crescent rolls that's all i can taste is the crescent rolls and i can't watch out red car and i can't taste anything else other than the crescent rolls so i decided i would try to use just regular biscuit i should have rolled this out on the counter but the boys were sitting on the counter playing with kinetic sands and i didn't have i just didn't so i just plopped it right into the dish and tried to mush it together it worked out just fine it just was a little bit more time consuming than I thought it was going to be um but i did like this way more than i like the crescent roll flavor i like the crescent roll flavor in a crescent roll but when it's in other recipes that's all i can taste so then into a bowl we have four eggs two tablespoons of milk and they say to just i'm browning some sausage over there they say to just add pepper but i add seasonings to my scrambled eggs the, the seasonings i use are a little bit of chili powder a little bit of garlic powder a little bit of onion powder. I think this is necessary. That's why the, the brunch pizza was so good. Um, I, don't, I wouldn't recommend just adding pepper. There's the onion powder going in. They're getting a little crazy while I'm doing my voiceover. Can you see that? Oh, man, this is just real life. This is paprika. So I do a little bit of chili powder, onion powder, garlic powder, paprika, and then I do a tiny bit of mustard powder. powder. I don't know why I ended up doing that one day, and it just was so good. Um, here I am trying to make you guys see sick with my camera. <laughs> so sorry. And then it doesn't tell you to salt, but Bobby Flay says to salt every layer, and who are you to argue against Bobby Flay? Let's just be real here. So I'm salting, and then I'm going to add some pepper to this also. Then um, I try to record myself 
putting it all into the dish and then I you guys are actually hanging out of the microwave right now so I dumped the sausage into the right on top of the biscuit and then I put the scrambled egg mixture right on top of that but I totally missed that clip because I closed you guys into the microwave next time I'm adding at least six eggs because there's bald spots here I don't feel like that four egg was nearly enough to cover and then I sprinkle a little bit of cheese on top it asked for a whole lot more cheese than that but I felt like that was plenty then I baked it um, and I know from using my thermometer all the time is a baked bread good is done at 210 degrees and here it is at 210 degrees because wow what a perfect day right and it ended up being so good the kids loved it kid friendly me friendly I tried I had to stop myself from eating that delicious then I had a fruit frat the only thing I did different was I didn't put the honey I don't like honey in my smoothies I don't for whatever reason so I did put just a little bit spoonful of sugar instead of the honey you can use the honey though whatever um and I I use this orange juice concentrate this will also go into Wow, it cut me off by telling me that I had 10% battery left on my phone. I am sorry that I'm rushing through these voiceovers, but I'm the one take voiceover queen because I refuse to do this more than once. Don't have much time. So this orange juice concentrate, I'm just plopping about two thirds of a cup um, into the blender. I'm also using this orange juice concentrate in the Thanksgiving fruit salad recipe. Here I'm putting in, what did I have? I had milk and water in there also, some vanilla extract. I didn't have frozen fruit. I did have frozen fruit, but I looked at it and I was like, nah, bro, that is not good. So I put some fresh fruit in there and a frozen banana. Didn't get the frozen banana because the kids were going crazy. And here I am pouring what may be one of the best smoothies I've ever tasted in my life. I don't typically add sugar to my smoothies, but yo, it's pretty good. I may be doing that from now on because I'm always like, well, it's fruit and juice. It's tons of sugar anyway, but... Anyhow, that was that. This is the recipe book that they all came out of. Thank you guys so much for watching, and I hope that you enjoyed this video despite my negligence in making it perfect. I hope that my intentions come through. I really try hard to get these videos out, despite what it looks like. I'm not trying to rush through this, but the three kids are upstairs now, completely unsupervised, and I really have to go watch them, so I really hope you enjoyed. Have a good day.